the verb. In the last lesson, we saw that there are three kinds of verbs, be, have and do, and that the form of the verb changes according to the subject. I am, you are, he is. I have, you have, he has. I do, you do, he does. Be and have are transitive verbs. They have an object. You can ask be what or have what and you get an answer. I am who? I am a teacher. I have what? I have a pen. But the do verb is sometimes transitive and sometimes intransitive when it doesn't have an object. I do what? I do my work. I like who? I like you. I jump. But if you ask the question, jump what? There's no answer. So jump is an intransitive verb. All action takes place in time. So, besides showing action, the verb has another very important job. It shows time. If I say, I am a teacher, it shows that I am a teacher now. If I say I was a teacher, it shows that I was a teacher sometime in the past, either yesterday or some years ago maybe. So I can say I have a pen or I had a pen in my hand. Sometimes you have to use two verbs together. For example, if you want to show continuous action. Jenny is skipping. In this sentence, skipping is the main verb. It's the more important verb because it shows you what Jenny is doing. Here the helping verb is is a be verb. The main verb is very lazy. It doesn't do any work except show the meaning. The helping verb does all the work in the sentence. It changes to show the time or to show who's doing something. If you say Jenny is skipping, it shows that Jenny is skipping now. If you say Jenny was skipping, it shows that Jenny was skipping yesterday. If you say they were skipping, it shows that many people were skipping yesterday. To show continuous action, you'll notice that you have to add ing to the main verb. A main verb which has ing attached to it is called the present participle. It's very easy to make the present participle. You just stick ing onto the main verb. Be, being, have, having, do, doing, jump, jumping, write, writing, stick, sticking. You see that when the main verb is a present participle, that is, the ing form of the verb be, have or do, the helping verb is always a be verb. Another time when you have to use two verbs together is when you talk of two events that are connected to each other, or you talk of some action which is already over but has some consequence in the present or future. I have cut my finger, so I can't write now. I can't write now. My finger still hurts. I've already eaten too much. I can't eat any more. Look at this sentence. By the time I went home, the children had already slept. So I went home at 10 and the children went to sleep at 9. So there are two events in the past and they are related to each other. Then you use the helping verb have. Have is the helping verb. The main verb, I have eaten or slept or cut, has changed in some way. It has turned into a past participle. Now how do you make the past participle? 
It's not as simple as the present participle in which you just stick ing onto the main verb. Let's see how to know what the past participle is. There are three ways in which you can make the past participle. There are some verbs in which you form the past tense by adding ed to the verb. I play, I played, I jump, I jumped, I count, I counted. These are called regular verbs. Why? Because they follow a rule. And what's the rule? You form the past tense by adding ed to the verb. The past participle of such verbs is always the same as the past tense. I play, I played, I have played. I count, I counted, I have counted. Now we come to the irregular verbs, which do not follow any rule while forming the past tense. There are a few verbs in which you form the past participle by adding en to the verb. Be, been, eat, eaten, give, given. There are some other irregular verbs in which you form the past participle by changing the verb in another way. Drink, drunk, swim, swum. Some verbs remain the same as in cut cut. How do you make out past participles? Just by reading a lot and listening to the language a lot. You use have plus past participle when an event in the past is related to a later time in the past or to the present or to the future. We have gone to the zoo many times, so we may not want to go there again. We had gone to the zoo many times, so we did not want to go there again. You use the past tense when the time of the event is mentioned, it has no relation to any other time. We went to the zoo yesterday. We saw how each of the three verbs be, have and do in their different forms can be used either as a main verb or as a helping verb in a sentence. But the main form of each of these verbs to be, to have or to do does not show time so it can't be used as a verb in a sentence or the present participle doing, for example, does not show time. Time is shown by the helping verb. He is doing his homework. 
I was reading a book. But these forms can be used in other ways in a sentence, either as a subject or as an object. Skipping is fun. What are we talking about? Skipping. So skipping is the subject of the sentence. Jenny loves skipping. Jenny loves what? Skipping. So skipping is the object of the verb love. A loving mother cares for her children. Who are we talking about? We are talking about a mother who loves. So loving is used as part of the subject. I told her to shut the door. I told her what? I told her to shut the door. So to shut is used as part of the object. Told is the verb. Climbing a mountain is not easy. Being a parent is not easy either. Having a proper breakfast is part of my morning routine. I enjoy eating ice cream. This apple is good to eat. He sat down to read the book. Given the limited time, they had to finish the work quickly. Look at the sentence. He sat down to read the book. Here the main form of the verb to read does not show time. But it tells you why he sat down. To read the book. So it tells you something about the verb sat. This apple is good to eat. To eat does not show time, but it tells you in what way the apple is good. Or you can say, this apple is good to look at. Given the limited time, Here the past participle given does not show time, but it tells you under what condition they had to work. Uses of the present participle as a verb To show continuous action Raju is having his breakfast. The children are having fun. They are enjoying themselves. I've been swimming for two hours now. To show future time, I'm going to Mysore tomorrow. I'm going to the zoo. I'm going to school. The horse is going to jump. To show habitual action. Keep plus present participle. She keeps telling me to shut the door, but I keep forgetting. The alarm keeps ringing till you shut it off. Sita's always playing. Do as a helping verb is a little different from the other two verbs be and have because in the statement the do verb doesn't show up as a helping verb. It appears only in questions and negative statements 
Do you walk to school? No, I do not walk to school. Do is a dummy auxiliary because it's hidden in the statement. I do walk to school becomes I walk to school. So do as a helping verb is used to make questions and negative statements. It's used in statements to emphasize what you're saying. I do walk to school. Rajesh, did you bring your book? No, I didn't bring my book. Tom, did you bring your book? Yes, I brought my book. Do as helping verb. Did you bring your book? No, I didn't bring it. Have as helping verb. Have you brought your book? No, I haven't brought my book.